Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to Mac Week Studio. We're here at PixCore Studios shooting another amazing episode on motion. 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 Now, you're going to do some color grading or color correcting in motion? Yeah, no, I'm going to call it color correction in motion. Why would you need to color correct in motion? Why would you need to? In fact, um, sometimes you're just working in motion uh -huh. and you, you want to make some changes to color. And it's generally not the kind of thing where you have like, um, you know, a live subject, like a talent that you're going to go do color correction. So no human subjects? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do human subjects here. I'm going to do something where you might have a background that you want to use, but it's not the right color. So I want to go over the various color correction tools that are built into motion and the ones that I use the most. Excellent. You might find some use of. So a as a starting example, I have um, this, this watercolor image. And this is, by the way, one of the built-in pieces of content that, that ship with motion. Uh, what is so that? It looks like cotton. It's, it's watercolor. It's a watercolor. Oh, okay. It's literally you know, a real watercolor, like a shot of a watercolor. And I want to use it as a background, but it's not the right color for me. So what can I do to change the color? And in motion, in the filters category, uh, there is a color correction folder that's full of a bunch of different options for doing color correction. Look at that. You know, a whole, whole bunch. Yeah. How many? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that number. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually going to look at them in list view so we can see their names. And I'm just going to focus on the ones that I like the most. So one thing I do, if I'm going to change the color of something, I first like to remove all color before I then change so the color. So you just desaturate the whole thing? Exactly, exactly. So one thing I use all the time is the hue saturation filter. So I'm just gonna drag that on. And that's because your main, you don't want the main color channels to affect the color or influence just, the color grade. Yeah, I wanna start with something that has no color. Okay. Otherwise, if I'm changing from blue to something else, I might have to color it some weird color to get to the color I want. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, um, and in fact, I have brought up the heads up display, it's F7, but in general here, I'm gonna hit F3 to go right to the filters inspector to see all the controls. Sometimes you don't see everything you want in the heads up display. And all I'm gonna do, there's three things here. Saturates, hue, saturation, value, HSV, right? And hue, on its own, you can just use, and you see if I drag there, I'm certainly changing the color, and I might find something I like there, and I'm done, okay? But I like a little more control than that, so instead, I'm gonna undo that, and I'll skip saturation for a minute. Value is something I never, ever adjust with HSV Ugh. because all it does is it, it makes the whole thing darker or lighter, blows the whites out right away, makes it look dingy. Yeah, it's just not, not a useful thing. But saturation, if I drag saturation all the way down, it just it pulls the, all color the color all, out, yeah. right? So that's my step one to do that. And then I go back to the library. And a couple things you can do. One thing I'll frequently use is colorize, but I'm not going to use it here. I'll show you why. If I add it, and this time I will hit F7. Basically, Colorize will remap the blacks and the whites to a different color. By default, it keeps the black black, um, and then you could remap the wipes to a different color, but it doesn't really do what I want here. Um, what I actually want to do, so I'm, I'm remapping the blacks to like a dark yellow or a dark blue or something, and you can get some interesting effects with this thing, but in this case, I'm actually going to delete this. I want to leave the blacks and the whites the way they are. I really don't want to affect them as much yeah, as the midtones. You want to keep them neutral. Yeah, yeah. So what I find can be the most um, sort of flexible tool is this gradient colorize filter, especially for graphics, for things that aren't um, like a photorealistic, that have a lot of gradations, because this can introduce a little bit of banding if something has a great deal of gradations, right. uh, or a little, very slight posturization. No, that, that would also, the, grade, the, the banding would affect in your source footage too. I mean, most of this is 8-bit material. So I would think. Yeah, but you're be. rendering in float space, yeah. but I'm, I'm just starting with graphics, right. so I don't really care too much. So this is going to look nice. So gradient colorized by default doesn't seem to have any impact. Uh, if we go to the inspector, the default gradient is just a black to white gradient. Now there's a whole bunch of different presets in here, and if you um, create any of your own, they'll be saved in this list as well. But before I get to those, if I pop open the gradient editor, we can see we're, we're mapping white to white and black to black. So there's no change right now, but I'm gonna actually add, by clicking on this lower bar, one tag in the middle, and this will allow me to remap all the gray values. So if I right click on that guy, I can quickly just go around and sample a color. White is staying white, yeah, and black, black is staying black, black. black. But I can just say, look, I want this whole thing to be more of kind of a rust color, so I can quickly get to something interesting and keep my whites and blacks. And that's kind of my goal here, yeah. is, is to keep those and just change the midtone. So that's one example. Of course, you could change those as well. So you can go to one of these um, presets, like 
candy corn or uh, film noir, uh, which gives kind of a cool uh, inverted black and white look, or um, chromy. Uh, there's all kind of interesting Looks things like to pull from here. Right now. Yeah, icy blue. Uh, and in fact, another way, it's kind of hard to look at those just by this pull, pull down list. But if you go to the library and you go to gradients and look at these in the icon view, you can really see what those gradients look like and then drag one right on to your to image and apply it that way. Yeah. And a little, little easier to do that. So that's one thing I like to do is use a combination of hue saturation to reduce, uh, pull color out, and then gradient colorize. Now here's a separate example where this thing to start with, I do want to do a similar thing, so I'll add hue saturation. So in fact, I'm just going to option drag the existing one onto it. And you see right away it's pulled the color out. You know, had, let me turn that off. There's a little tint to it. I've removed that. But now before I do a gradient colorize, I want to kind of increase the contrast. Right? So it's really kind of a flat thing. And that can be good for some purposes, but in this case I want... Uh, you want to emphasize the cracks and yeah, the texture. Yeah, really the, bring that out, yeah. exactly. So you might think, if we go back to the uh, filters here and we go to color correction and back to list view, there's a variety of filters that will deal with contrast. In fact, there's one called contrast and there's one called gamma. Now, I really prefer not to use either one of those. I'm going to throw them on the clip for a moment here and they'll have no impact by default because they don't change anything. Um, but gamma, if I drag it, will kind of change the mid-ranges, yeah. technically while leaving whites white and black black, just affect the mid-ranges. I'll undo that. And contrast uh, will increase the contrast as well. And it's got a little pivot point around which you can adjust it and kind of get a, a good look. That'll work, but I'm going to undo that. The reason is I really like to use levels instead of either of those because levels basically can do what either of those does in one filter, right? right. So instead of using those, uh, the one thing about levels is if you look in the heads-up display, there's, there's nothing no there. There's nothing there. <laughs> yeah. Nothing it's there. It's a little tough to use in the heads-up display. So F3 brings us to the filters inspector, and there we have uh, a friendly kind of histogram, right? Yep. Something if you used Photoshop, you might be used to, or you use the scopes in Final Cut. So from here, I can now play around. I can tuck in uh, sort of bring the, make the darks darker, make the whites pop more. Yeah. This and then even if I adjust the middle one, here's my gamma right there. Right. Adjust the middle. So I can really get there. That's a much more dramatic look uh, that I've gotten by using the levels, which takes care of both of those in one shot. So from there, I could option drag this gradient colorize onto it. And, uh, you know, now I've started with something that's got a lot more contrast. Now I get something very interesting, either using a preset or, or I could, making your own. Yeah, or I could recent that gradient colorize, which defaults to this, you know, in very ugly kind of thing. But you can uh, play around and use. You the, added a tag in the middle. That's what gave, that's what allowed you to preserve your yeah, whites and blacks. So yeah. There's no tag in the middle there. Right. I was and, watching. You were. You were. You, you were exactly paying attention. But I could play with different colors. I could uh -huh. purposely make the ends white and black. Um, I'm just right clicking to quickly sample. You can click on these and then go into click on the color swatch and bring up the 10 color oh, picker. I'm that more fascinated by all the color samples that you've saved in your little Yeah, I've got lots of color drawer, samples. For all, color yeah, sample it's drawer. kind of a mess for all <laughs> kind of logos and stuff. I bet you don't remember what all those are for. I don't, I don't. <laughs> um, but that's another idea where I'm using the same method of first pulling the color out and then using gradient, but between those two, I'm using levels. And by the, the, by the way, the order of these really matter. If I take the hue saturation, for example, and stick it on the top, uh, it's going to pull all the color out as a last operation. So these kind of work from the bottom up, okay? It's the render pipeline or the processing yes, yeah, pipeline. Exactly, exactly. So the last example is something a little different here. So this is, a, this is an image from iStock Photo. And uh, it's this guitar, it's got a white background. And there's two things I want to do with this. Um, I want to get rid of the background, first of all. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I want to do is, I don't want to see the guitar, I just want it as a shape. Okay, I don't want to actually see the guitar. And, and, and color correction will actually allow you to get there to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the library, to the filters, and I'm going to start in the keying category here, because I'm going to do something called a luma key. Okay, Luma key will key out either the brightest or darkest parts of something. And yes, you could go into Photoshop and remove the background, but it's let's say... It's an extra step. It's an extra step. Yeah, I'm here. Why not? I'm, I'm going to throw on the Luma key, and by default, it doesn't seem to do anything. If I hit F3 again, uh, we can see its parameters here. And what I'm going to do is, if you kind of move the top and bottom, 
you can kind of see it start to key oh, out. Yeah. yeah, see there it goes. I'm sort of getting rid of the guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I really want to do is not get rid of the guitar, but the opposite. So I'm going to hit the invert checkbox. Ah, okay. A little reverse key. Yeah, and then I can basically fully key out that background and just have the guitar left. It's got a little white okay. fringe, but yeah, I can use a little. That's all right. I can use a little roll off here to to get rid of that, make it a little smoother there. So now, in fact, if I hit Shift T, and by the way, rather than doing that, you can go up under this. Uh, this channels menu, transparency, shift T, will show us that it's got a transparent background, sure. right? So shift C gets us back to the color background. So now, instead, I don't want to see the guitar. I want it to be all white, the whole thing white. So here's where I'm going to go back to the library, uh, back to my color correction. And the last one here I'm going to use is the uh, channel mixer. And this is a great use for the channel mixer that I, that I like to use it for. So I throw the channel mixer on there. And again, I'm just going to go to the inspector rather than the heads-up display. A lot of parameter sliders. There. A lot of things. There's basically, there's the red output, the green output, the blue output, and the alpha output. Uh, the fast way to do this is to click the monochrome checkbox, okay, which eliminates everything but the red. And then where it says red to alpha, all the, left, all the way to the left is uh, black, all the way to the right is white. Look at that. And then I've got a fully uh, opaque shape there. Okay, just because that's all I want, right? I just want to include it with some other graphics. I don't want to see the guitar. I just want the outline shape. And that's a quick way that you can use one of the filters to create that. Now I could go back to the uh, Lumen, smooth that out a little bit. You got some detail of the guitar. Yeah, the... but there, there we've got the shape. Okay, so I knocked out the background and turned it just into a white shape that then I could then include, uh, you know, with maybe I'll move this up above this other background and turn that back on and can combine it. Um, so you got like one, two, three, four, five, six. You've like seven. You've, got, you've showed us like seven color correction yeah, tools. Yeah, they're, they're the ones I, I really use the most uh, out of these. And they're all other ones are useful. The the threshold can create some interesting effects. But in terms of things I go to frequently, those are the ones I really really grab the most when I'm uh, working on creating composite motion graphics and trying to get all the colors to work together in a, in a composition. Excellent, excellent. So uh, if you're interested in learning motion from the ground up. Uh, we have good training at rippletraining.com. Mark has a whole series. You want to, you know, if you want to do binge watching of, yeah, you can get them all. Uh, you yeah. get them all and sit there for like 17 hours and watch motion training. We have that up there. Very but good Mark, tip pieces. <laughs> so that was an excellent tip, and hopefully you'll be able to uh, employ and deploy this awesome color grading correction tip in your own workflow. Uh, please follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, and um, check with back at rippletraining.com. Thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.